Hi, and welcome to my first Blender tutorial. Today we'll be learning how to make an alien planet in Blender. We'll be learning uh, a lot of new techniques, mostly texturing with regards to converting a diffuse texture into specular and black and white, uh, sorry, specular and bump maps. Uh, we'll also be learning how to make things like clouds that are both transparent and glossy. And we'll learn about atmosphere layers, simple Fresnel spheres that add a lot of effects to your planet image. Finally, at the end, we'll be doing some compositing to the image, discussing how to make an image look more realistic, and um, how to composite an, an atmosphere without using a lot of volumetric shading. So uh, at the end, if you've got any questions or you want some more detailed response, you can check out this video and a more detailed explanation of what's going on at my blog. Uh, until then though, let's dive in. So the first thing you want to do is open up Blender. You've got your default Blender scene. And as usual, scrap everything. So you want to switch your rendering engine to Cycles. That's the rendering engine we'll be working with today. Uh, as many of you know, it's far more realistic and even though it takes longer, it's definitely worth the time uh, than the competing Blender render engine, which I hear they're discontinuing soon. So, uh, with my method of making planets, a planet is just three basic spheres, the ground, the clouds, and the atmosphere. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make a bunch of spheres. So you want to hit one on your number pad and five to switch to orthographic mode. Then hit shift A, mesh, and then UV sphere to add a mesh. In this uh, panel on the left here, you'll see some settings regarding the mesh you modified. Be careful not to click out or else you lose these settings forever. So I'm going to click segments and change it to 64. Click on rings and change it to 32. And finally, you want to just scale up your sphere a little bit. About there should be good. Click over to this right panel here with our bunch of neat tabs. You want to click on this little wrench one, those are the modifiers. Click add modifier and subdivision surface. And you want to turn up the view to 2 and the render to 3. If, you're do if you have a less powerful computer, you may want to stick with keeping the view at 1, or 0 even, but uh, I'll keep it at 2 for now. And finally, over on this left tab again, you want to change shading from flat, which it is right now, to smooth. Now we've got our first sphere. In the outline on the right tab, right click it, uh, sorry, double click it to rename it. I'm going to call it round going to be our, our, the base of our alien planet. So the next thing you want to do is create the other two spheres. So hit Z to go into wireframe mode, shift D to duplicate the sphere, hit escape to prevent the sphere from changing its uh, origin, or its center, like the location, and then hit S to scale, and you want to just make it a little bit larger. So what I like to do is I go into the image and I try to scale so I can just barely see the two lines next to each other. Then I want to hit Shift D again to duplicate it one more time, and then scale it up a little more. Go in, and now we should see three sets of lines next to each other. Now these are actually not the sizes you want, but we'll fix that in a second. So we're going to name this sphere the mo outermost one, atmosphere. I spelled that wrong. type today. And we're going to name the second sphere we created the clouds. So you want to select the second sphere you've created and you can do it in the outline over here. And you want to scale it up so it's just slightly smaller than the atmosphere one. And now you want to select the ground sphere and scale it up so that it's just slightly smaller than the clouds. Now that we've got our three spheres, we're going <laughs> to get rid of them. So you want to click on atmosphere and then shift click on clouds and hit M to move them both to another layer. So that we're just left with the ground. Hit Z to exit out, uh, to get back into solid mode. And now we're going to do a little bit of fiddling with the environment in our scene. So go over to this left tab over here. There's a little button here that says a uh, that says, a, that says like a picture of an Earth, and it's called World. And now to see what we're doing, we're going to hit Shift-Z in the viewport. to, And this is our render scene right now. We're going to click Use Nodes in this panel 
click on the color and turn it all the way down to black. That's all we're going to be working with in there for now. And now we're going to go Shift A in the viewport, add a lamp, make it a sun lamp. And I've got your basic lamp. So grab Z um, just for visual purposes, and then R and rotate it until you've got uh, an orientation you like. I generally like one like this. I feel that adds a nice amount of drama. Now one last thing before we move on to texturing, we're going to have Shift A, add a camera, and then hit Alt, Control, Zero to center the object in the camera and just move the camera around a little bit to your liking by selecting it and hitting grab Z. There we go. And now we're going to go into the left pan the right panel one more time. Click on this little camera thing and uh, this is the render properties and click under dimensions select the border. And now it's only going to render the border. So let's start with some texturing. We're going to be using the Compositor to Texture. It's much more powerful than the Default Materials tab. So let's get right to it. So we're going to be adding Diffuse Map, Specular Map, and Bump Map primarily, and some fiddling around with color grading. So to pull up the Node Editor, just go down to the bottom here, and you'll see this little triangle with three lines. You want to click and drag that to split your screen. Now, uh, you've got two identical windows, but on the bottom left of the left one. You're going to click this little button right here with the 3D view icon and then go to node editor. While your mouse is still on this side, hit N and then when your mouse is on this side in your other uh, screen, you want to hit T and now we've got some more room to work with. Select your planet by right clicking on it and you can check in the outline to make sure it's, that's the one you've selected and you're going to hit new texture. So now we've got this lovely looking planet. Isn't it beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, so we need to color this sphere somehow. So the first thing we're going to do is pull up our image texture. So click on this diffuse, and if you have this, I forget what the add-on is, but if you hit control, try hitting control T, and it might bring up these three nodes. These three nodes are super important. So the first one is a texture coordinate node. We're going to change it from UV to generated. So click and drag on the generated output and plug it into the vector input of your mapping node. Then you're going to take uh, the projection type from your image texture and select sphere. This will ensure that the diffuse texture we're using will be mapped correctly. So now, uh, once you have these three up, oh by the way, you can pull up these nodes if you don't have the control T feature by hitting shift A and then clicking search and typing the name of the node. So the, the name of the first one is texture coordinate. You can see it's the first one that comes up. The second one is mapping. And the third one is image texture. And then you just hit enter and it adds it to the scene. Okay, so now you're gonna select your texture. You can use any texture you want for this. However, uh, the texture I'll be, I'll be using for this is one I pulled offline. So you just select open and go to the tech, the uh, wherever you store your texture. In my case, it's in a folder called alien planets because I'm very creative with names. And just double click on the texture and you can see it pops straight into view, which is nice. It's actually a really bad angle for the camera. Uh, you can change the angle to any one you wish, but I'm gonna move this around. Yeah, you know, you hit your Alt Control Zero to change the camera position. And I'm gonna rotate this particular map so that I can see only this parts of the ocean, or this parts of the water. It'll, it'll be better when we add the uh, the reflection on the water later. But again, this is completely personal preference. Um, you, you're the artist; you add whatever you want. Now, uh, you do want, however, you do want good lighting. So I'd recommend illuminating a little more than half the planets. Mm, you gotta, you gotta kind of fiddle around with it. Mm, all right, there we go. Figure out which. Uh, which direction you need to rotate in. Now, uh, right click, a oh, as you can tell from this uh, render, the, it's a little dim. If you're not happy with the lighting, just go into the outline here, select sun, and uh, click on, uh, oh crap, select sun, and <laughs> the emission texture pops up here. Change the strength around five or whatever, uh, whatever you feel is appropriate. I like a nice bright texture, although, this might be too bright. There we go. Okay, so now to get back to your um, planet texture, just right click on the planet. And we're going to start by giving you some color grading options. 
So for me personally, I'm actually really happy with the color of this planet right now. But if you're not, there are some things we can do about it. So for one, uh, if you've looked at source material of planets, you've probably noticed that around the edges of the planet in question, you have a sort of fading out of the color. Just it's very slight, but it's it's pretty it's pretty uh pretty prominent. So the way we're going to achieve this is by mixing the diffuse texture with another texture that's slightly faded out, and then telling the computer to only apply it to the edges of the sphere uh, that are facing the camera. So first thing we're going to add is a mix uh, a mix node. So just type mix and hit the second one, a mix RGB. Plug it in behind the diffuse. And the next thing we're going to add is um, an RGB curves node. So just type RGB and go down to RGB curves. Wanna, if you want to move this stuff around so that it's neater, you're more than welcome to do so. I, I tend to like a neat node workflow. So we're going to pull out the color from the RGB curves node and plug it into the color factor, uh, the color input on the mix node, and then take the color output from the image texture and plug it into the RGB curves color input. And finally, so right now it's just fiddle, it's just changing the texture, all, the color of the texture, all over the image. But you're going to check, tie it. You're going to add a layer weight node. Add it to the top. Take the facing output and plug it into the factor input. And to achieve that faded effect, you're going to take the very middle of this line and pull it down a little bit, and it fades the edges of the texture just a tiny not a lot, but it helps. All right. So now the next thing we got to do is the specular. So um, planets reflect light, especially the watery parts. And we're going to actually be focusing mostly on the watery parts because the um, reflection on water is actually a really beautiful and really profound effect that completely changes the style of the image, and it's really worth adding. So uh, the way we're going to achieve this is by mixing a glossy shader with the diffuse shader and telling the computer to only add the gloss to um, the parts of the image that contain water. And we're actually going to do this by by creating a specular map within Blender. So you can download software to do this for you. You can use GIMP or Photoshop or some other uh, paid method to do this. But I like to keep my workflow within Blender, and so I'm going to show you how I do it <coughs> all within the Blender compositor. So let's first start by adding a mix shader by Shift A and mix. And this time it's going to be a mix shader, not a mix RGB. And now we're going to shift a glossy shader and plug it in. And this is going to look horrible, but, oh, Jesus. Yeah, this is pretty bad looking. Um, we want this effect, but only on the oceans. So let's, let's, let's start by, let's try to achieve that. So what we want to, so this factor value here tells the computer where to apply the glossy part of the, um, of the texture. So we need to, create a specular map, which is essentially a black and white map where white means reflect here and black means don't reflect here. So let's shift A and RGB to black white node. Take the color output of the image texture and plug it into the color input of the RGB to black white node. And now we're going to add a color ramp. So shift A, color ramp. And this will let us fiddle around with the factor values. So take the value from the RGB black white plug it into the factor and take the color and plug it from the color ramp and plug it into the factor up here and you can see it's already kind of changed a little bit and now uh, in order to actually view the the specular texture we are generating hit control shift and then click on the color ramp and it will the image that you're seeing in your viewport will turn into an image of what you're seeing with a color ramp so you fiddle around with the values on the color ramp you can see it's changing the viewport, and white is where the image will reflect, and black is where the image will not reflect. So we want only this part up here, which is actually ironically kind of black right now. We want it to only we want it to be white, and everything else to be black. So this takes a lot of fiddling around, but since you just play with the values, and I usually change this thing up here to ease, um, but you play with the values until you get something that's highlighted, uh, only the parts that you want highlighted in white, essentially. And so what I found is that for this particular texture, swapping these two bars around and pulling the black all the way over so that there's only a tiny bit of white works best. And now you can see already that we have pretty much only 
the oceans highlighted, which and some of the ice caps. Well, that's not too bad, and that's exactly what we wanted. And even some of the smaller lakes, which is nice. So if we um, take the mix, if we delete this viewer output node and take the shader from the mix shader and plug it into the surface input of the material output, uh, you can see now that the glossy is only affecting the oceans, which is exactly the effect we wanted. And even though this is not <laughs> the exact effect I'm assuming you thought was coming, uh, it does already look pretty good, and we're going to still tweak that. So the next value we're going we're to be tweaking is called roughness. Um, roughness basically def sort of defines how much the light is spread around the surface. Uh, and you need to play with this <laughs> until you get something you're happy with. So if you have a very high roughness, it's not very reflective because the right light is being distrib distributed evenly around the surface. And if you have a very low brightness, it's like this very concentrated spot that looks horrible and artificial. So you got to play with it until you find something you like. I usually set it to around 0.4, maybe 0.375 is good. Uh, from this camera angle, it actually looks really good. But um, you can see, I bet, I bet you probably noticed that there's something that looks wrong with it, and that's the color. So you're thinking oceans are blue, shouldn't the reflection be blue? Actually, a blue reflection does not look good. It looks horrible. What I found is that you want to reflect the color that the actual light, uh, the, the actual color of the light that's being reflected, not the thing that's doing the reflecting. So the sunlight is usually orange, yellow, around that color. So you want your reflection off the water to be that color. So fiddle around until you get something you're happy with. I try to get something that looks kind of like molten gold um, on the surface there. Uh, you really, it's really just a lot of experimentation, trial and error. Um, rose gold, I guess, is a good description of the color. Uh, something like this, I'm pretty happy with. It will look much better once you have the clouds and the atmosphere on, but this, this, this looks pretty good. Okay, that's actually pretty much it for the specular, but now we have to add something called bump. So if you look at this image right now, it's not very realistic. So it's very pixelated and uh, it looks flat and uninteresting. Well, we can add something called bump to the image, which we're also going to generate from this uh, RGB to black white node. And by plugging it into these normal outputs, we can tell the computer where to pretend there are bumps. And uh, the effect will be noticeable, and I think it does make the image look a lot better. So the first thing we're going to do is hit Shift A, type bump. Oops, sorry. Bump. Oh my lord. B U M. Goddamn P. Okay. Shift A, add bump, and then take the value from the RGB to black white node, plug it into the height of the bump node, take the normal output, and plug it into the normal of the glossy and the normal of the diffuse. And you can uh, already see from just looking at the image that it looks pretty drastically different. It looks, it looks to me, to, for lack of a better word, the landscape looks more interesting. It looks like something you could physically reach out and touch, like it's a model of a globe instead of just a flat picture of one. And that is super important. The, the, almost, the tactile vision, as I like to call it, is a super important aspect of making a render look not just realistic but beautiful. So uh, thankfully, that's actually pretty much all we have to do for the... Uh, that's pretty much all we have to do for this particular texture. Um, when you add the clouds and then the atmosphere, it's going to look a lot better. So let's start with the clouds. So we're going to go into our second layer, or wherever you put your clouds, and you're going to select the clouds by um, just clicking, left-clicking in the outline up here. And you're going to hit M and move it to the first layer. Go back to the first layer in this little box down here. Um, hit Shift-Z again to jump back into the rendered mode, and you'll notice that all your hard work is gone. And that's just because the cloud sphere is covering it. So you want to click New Texture, name it Clouds in the Node Editor on the left side. And if you, uh, if we add a transparent shader, we'd actually be able to see the, the planet underneath it. And we do want to do that, but we only want to do that where there are no clouds. So the first thing we got we got to do is add clouds. So again, do that. You can do that Control T thing, or you can manually do Shift A, add texture coordinate, Shift A, add mapping, Shift A, add image texture. You want to take the generated, plug it into the vector input of the mapping node, change this projection to sphere again. And you want to click Open and go to whatever cloud texture you choose. I personally use NASA's cloud texture for the Earth. 
It looks pretty great, and it's a pretty high-res image, so you'll get quality out of it. So, uh, as you can see, it doesn't really look great. I mean, it looks like clouds, but we can't see anything underneath. So, we need to tell the computer where exactly we want it to, uh, where exactly we want it to show the clouds and show the, where exactly we want it to show the planet underneath. So, the first thing we're going to do is move this off to the side, and we're going to add a transparent texture, a uh, transparent BDF, rather, BSDF, and a mix shader, and plug this together, and now you can kind of actually see the planet underneath, but unfortunately the clouds are as transparent as the planet, and we don't want that. So clouds are equal parts glossy, like they're equal parts reflected and see-through. So for they reflect a lot of light, but they also let a lot of light through. And we have to reflect that, <laughs> get it, in our image. So we're going to take the color output from the image texture and plug it into the factor input of the mix shader. And that will tell us to only um, use transparency when there are no clouds. And Right now it's not doing that, you have to switch these two node inputs. So put the diffuse on the bottom and the transparent on the top. And now you've got a super vibrant image of the planet underneath and you can just barely make out the clouds, which is almost how I want it. We do want the clouds to be kind of highlighted though, so we're going to first add a glossy node to give them reflections. And it'll, it'll literally highlight them white, basically. And then we're going to give them bump, but significantly less than the planet itself. But just enough so that you can have that tactile vision that I was talking about earlier. So we're going to add uh, another mix shader. So take the mix shader and mix it with the other mix shader. Then you're going to shift A, add glossy. Take the BSDF output and plug it into the shader input. Now we've got this horrible reflection looking thing. Um, we're going to take the color input from the image texture and plug it into the color uh, input, sorry, color output of the image texture and plug it into the color input of the glossy BDSF. And you can already see that some of the clouds are being highlighted. But we need to once more let the computer know where we want it to reflect. So if you recall before, we used an RGB to black-white node to ensure that the computer reflected only where we wanted it to. So you're going to shift A, RGB, black-white to generate that spectral map. And luckily we don't have to do any fiddling around with this. We just take the color from the image texture, plug it into the color of the RGB black-white, take the value and plug it into the factor. And now you've got some of the clouds highlighted in white, some of them in gray, but regardless, the clouds are much more visible. And once more, you're going to have to change your roughness value uh, to something that's appropriate. I personally like it around 0 0.5, maybe point, like 0.45 is a good value. Uh, when the atmosphere on top, it's going to make the clouds look a lot more realistic, but uh, for now, this actually works pretty well. So. Finally, we're going to add some bump, and it's the exact same procedure as it was before. You're going to shift A, add bump, take the value from the RGB black-white node, add it to the height, take the normal from the bump, plug it into the normal of the glossy BSDF, and the normal of the diffuse shader. And you can see we've got some ridiculous bump on those clouds. They look pretty much like mountains. So we're going to turn it down, somewhere around 0.2, but you can fiddle around in it until you're happy. Artist discretion. And we're actually halfway, we're halfway through making a, a good alien planet. So the next thing we gotta do is the atmosphere. And we're actually gonna leave it in a separate layer, but we wanna look at it with regards to the whole image. So you're gonna hold shift and click on the layer your atmosphere is in. So now we've got this annoying blockage of our earlier textures. You're just gonna right click on the atmosphere and you can check to make sure it's highlighted by looking in your outliner in the top right. You're gonna click new under the in the node editor to add a new material, and you're going to name this atmosphere or whatever you choose. Um, but it should reflect, you know, the fact that you're texturing an atmosphere. So the atmosphere is actually the easiest thing to composite, uh, to, to texture rather. It's pretty interesting to composite. But we're going to, um, we want, if you, if you look at the way an atmosphere affects a planet, you'll notice that it's very, very colored around the edges, and then it sort of fades into transparent in the middle. And we're going to reflect that the same way we reflected the um, fading out of the colors in the planet texture with a layer weight. So first thing you're going to do is add a mix shader and then a transparent shader. Plug them in together. 
and you're actually eventually going to need to switch them, just letting you know. Uh, so it should be in this configuration with the transparent on top and the diffuse on the bottom. Now you're going to shift A, um, add a layer weight, take the facing output and plug it into the factor node, and you can see how we've got this transparent effect in the middle and this colored effect around the edges. You now, now you got to change it to what color you want, so you can make it like green or something, but that doesn't look very realistic. Generally blue is the way to go. So there's an effect called, I think called Rayleigh scattering, and because blue has the shortest wavelength, it scatter, it bounces off the most gas particles in the atmosphere, and it scatters the most, and so that's why the sky looks blue. Um, although there's, it's more complicated than that. Violet actually has the shortest wavelength of all the colors, but I think there's something about the cones in our eyes that can't see violet as well as blue. But anyways, it should be kind of bluish, especially if you've got water and ice. So um, I'm going to make this like a sort of a light blue, and now it doesn't actually look that great because there's so much blue, so if you change this um, blend value up here to something more reasonable like 0.4 or 0.35, uh, you can change how much blue is covering the planet. So all, all the way up to 1 is basically everything is blue, and then all the way at 0 is almost nothing is. A lot of people like this value. I actually don't like it as much. It doesn't look very realistic in my opinion, so I'm going to set it at around. 0.4, I think is a good value. And believe it or not, we're actually done with the planet. So now we're going to move on to compositing, but first we have to render, and we got to change a couple of render settings first. So we can just hit Z to exit out of the real-time render mode, and the first thing you want to do is go down to sampling and change it from the render samples from 128 to 64. That'll help it render faster. Make sure you're rendering at 50%. The image will be lower quality, but we only want lower quality for, you know, test render. And finally, under Film here, you want to check off Transparent, because we're going to be combining some layers. Now, if you go to the second panel, uh, this is very, very important. So you see this thing called Render Layer? Rename it to General. And click under Layer here. With this selected, click the layer that has your, at your ground and clouds. Now you want to click this plus sign to add another layer. Call it Atmosphere and you want to click the layer that has your <coughs> atmosphere. So when you render, it will render two separate images, and when we composite, we'll layer those two images on top of each other. You're actually all set now, so hit F12 to render, and I'll catch you in a minute when it's done. All right, so now the render has been finished, and we can only see the uh, Despite the fact that we, rent, we did render two layers, we can only see one of them, and that's perfect. That's just the way the compositing works at first. So we're going to make a couple of changes to our workflow here. So we're going to move to the compositing workflow, as I like to call it. So you're going to hit Escape in this window to get back to your node editor. In your 3D view, you're going to click on that little 3D view icon in the left bottom left-hand corner and go to UV Image Editor. Click this little button down here to open up the render result. And now, in the node editor, you're going to click, you see these uh, three little buttons down here, this one's for the material, this pinkish one, this checkerboard over here is for textures, and this middle one with the pictures is uh, the compositing. So you're going to click use nodes, and it will pop up the two basic nodes for you. You've got your render layer input and your compositing, um, your, your final compositing output. So you're going to uncheck, you make sure use alpha is unchecked because we want the final image to be black. Um, Actually, yeah, this looks good, okay. Um, and one more thing, yes, just make sure down here it says composites, because otherwise it's going to render one layer, but you want it to render both. Uh, or rather, what you were doing in the compositor. So, let's get to work. So, compositing is all about making the image both look more realistic and making sure everything in the image is there. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this render layer, Shift D, move it beneath this other render layer. We're going to take this compositing node and drag it out because we're going to need some room to work. Um, and we're going to go Shift A, Alpha over, add it to this line over here to plug into the image input on the compositing node, and then take the image output from the bottom node and plug it into the second image output on the Alpha over node. You won't notice anything has changed, but if you go down here to the settings on the bottom node and change it from General to Atmosphere, you'll notice the Atmosphere has now been added to the image. Alright, so let's start making this more realistic. So if you go Shift A and add a glare node, we're going to be affecting how much glare is generated by specifically this part up here, the part at the 
light is generally reflecting off of, which is the ocean. So you're going to change it from streaks to fog glow, and you're going to change the threshold down to 0 0.05, and you can see we've got this nice little glow effect going. Alright, so we've got some good looking glare. You can play around with that to add some more glare if you'd like. Um, I think 0 0.05 is a good amount. So next we're going to add is a filter for sh to sharpen the image. Um, so click Shift A, Filter, and select Sharpen. And this looks horrible because it's really it can it's really easy to overdo it. I generally turn it down to around 0.4 for full rendered images, but for low res images the effects are like multiplied. So you want to turn it down to 0.2 at this resolution. But you got to fiddle around with this when you do your final render. All right, and that's actually all for the top layer. Um, we don't need to add too much to the ground and the clouds. But for the bottom layer, we gotta we gotta do a little more. So the atmosphere has a couple neat effects. First of all, it glows. So we're gonna add another glare node. Uh, change it to fog glow and change the threshold to even less than the other one, so around 0 0.04, because a lot of light is reflecting off the atmosphere. Uh, we're gonna increase the size to nine, the maximum. And we're gonna add something that I discovered after a lot of trial and error. So uh, when I posted images like these uh, to Reddit for some critique for the first couple times, a lot of people told me that the cutoff of the atmosphere is actually it's too sharp. It doesn't look very realistic because the atmosphere kind of fades into outer space. So um, the way I'm going to achieve this is not like, I, people suggested I use volumetric shaders or stuff like that, but um, it, it, it's that takes up a lot of render time. I don't want to do that. So we're going to go Shift A and add a blur node. And add you want the second blur, not the first bilateral blur. So add it to the bottom uh, to the atmosphere layer. And then you're going to change it to fast Gaussian. Click relative and set the values for x and y to oops one percent. And you can see now we've got this lovely little fall off that is absolutely, it's actually really like pretty close to what you see in a picture or something. And you can fiddle around this again to get something you're happy with, but um, I found that 1% actually works really, really well. And that's it for the two layers themselves, but combined we have a little more work to do. So we're going to be adding some chromatic aberrations. So when you take a picture with a camera, do the, I think maybe the curvature of the lens, the image at the edges appears a little bit distorted and you get this weird little looking RGB effect. So the way we're going to mimic this is by hitting Shift A, um, typing search, clicking search rather, and going to lens distortion, placing it in between the alpha over and the composite node, and changing dispersion to 0.02. And you can see the image got a little bit larger. Uh, and what you'll notice is the values at the edge, where there are sharp edges, have been look a little bit more um, sort of pixelated. And that's that's legitimate chromatic aberration. It's a really really good way of imitating that. To see this effect more, you know, amplified, just turn up the dispersion to one and enjoy the result. Uh, looks pretty horrifying, <laughs> to be honest. But um, 0 0.02 is generally a good value. You might want to turn it up to give it a 0 0.03 or something. But um, you do what you think looks best. And finally, we're going to transform the image to make it look a little bit. Uh, less pixelated, so to speak. Um, this is a trick I learned from I think, another YouTuber. But you add two transforms, one, and they essentially are slight inverses of each other. So one scale you set to 10, and it'll blow up the image. And the other you set to 0 0.09, or essentially very close to 1 tenth. And it brings the image back to normal size, but it offsets the image just enough that it removes a little bit of that artificial quality from it. And did something wrong. Huh. Usually 0 0.09 works better, but apparently. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, but you, you play around with it, you uh you can do whatever you feel looks best. This is actually absolutely not necessary, but um I found that in some renders it makes it look a little more realistic. Not really in one object renders. But uh, believe it or not, you've actually <laughs> you've made your realistic looking alien planet. So you got to render this at higher resolution and then fill with the compositing values. I'd also recommend playing around with Fresnel, the, that blue glow. Not the glow itself, but the blue shading that we talked about. 
to get something you like. Uh, this is really, Blender is a tool, is an artist's tool, and you're the artist, and you gotta, you gotta add your own flair, you gotta make, make it your own, make it personal. Um, it's gotta be expression. Well, uh, if you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, dislike it, but let me know why. Maybe I can fix it. Maybe I can make it better um, in future videos. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below or on my blog. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. I'll also leave a link uh, to the texture that I use that I used in this video. Uh, but you can really find a lot of them just by Googling. Uh, I recommend checking out my blog, and if you see any uh, images you'd like tutorials done for there, give me a shout out in the comments below, and I'll... Uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll take a look at it. Other than that, have yourself a nice day, and I'll see you next time.